In this lesson, we will see how we can use data scraping in UiPath. Data scraping is just telling UiPath that this is structured data. Then UiPath will, if it is structured data indeed, extract the data to data tables. For example, we have this uh, Amazon search here. We have items. We can see that we have one item here, one book here, and, and so on. This is structured data, so UiPath can extract these results. Let's see how that is done. So we go to UiPath. Then we click the data scraping wizard up here. We select the first element. Let's just say that we want to extract the title and the corresponding price. The first thing that we'll do is to get the title. So click next. We choose the title here. And then we want to choose the next title. So what we do now is telling UiPath that here we have a pattern. So click next and choose the next title. Now you can see that UiPath automatically find that pattern. We have one title here, here, here. It became yellow. So we can rename this column instead of just calling it column one, column one. We can rename it to title. Then we can click next. And in our preview, we can see we have a title column with all the titles. We can now choose to extract correlated data. That is, for example, the price or whatever we wanted. So click to extract correlated data and choose the price. Make sure that you get the whole price with you, so like this. Then we will choose the second element, that's just the second price down here, like this. We can even rename this to price. Then we click next. Now we have our preview, we can see that our data is fine and smooth. We can see here that uh, structured COBOL programming that misses the price, but that's probably because it misses the price here in the search. Yeah, here. So that one, it will just uh, skip. Then we can click finish and UiPath will now ask us if this data is spanning multiple pages. This means that if we scroll down, we can see that we have a next button. So the, this data is indeed uh, spanning multiple pages, nine pages to be exact. And now we can choose if we want all nine pages extracted. Let's not do that. So we click no, but you know that you have the possibility to click yes to get all the data. Let's just click no. This one will only get us the front page. If we, uh, the important part here is that extract structured data here. And what we want to do here is that we can see that in the output, this one will extract to a data table. And here UiPath have predefined that name to be extract data table. So a data table is nothing more than an Excel clone just in the memory. So every time we close the robot, the robot stops, then this data table would disappear. So we need to have it written now, for example, to an Excel sheet. So let's do that. Let's go to write range and choose the one on the workbook. This, this doesn't need an Excel application scope, so we'll drag this one in. The workbook path. Well, I created an empty sheet here called New Microsoft Excel Worksheet. So shift right click, copy as path. We will hard code it in here for now, like this, because this is just a quick example. We will write to sheet one, that's fine. Let us just delete this range as we always do. And then click add headers. We want the price and the title headers. And then the data table, that's just the data table that we got from up here. So when you press control space, you can find it here, extract data table. So this one will get the data and write it out to this um, sheet. And let's see if it works. It doesn't matter if we have it covered by this file explorer or we have scrolled down, UiPath will um, extract it anyway. You can see how fast it was. Then we can go to our folder and we can verify that we indeed got our extracted data in. That's it. We have our title and price and you can see how easy that was. Let's just spice up the case a little. So let me close this one down and then open this Amazon sheet I got here. So our mission here, this one is not complicated. Don't let that scare you but I still recommend you to do the operations with me. So here I have an Excel table. It's just one column called search. We have five search uh, strings, Python, Ojo Hotkey, C Sharp, VB.net and COBOL. We already did the COBOL. We want to do a search on each of these uh, search strings. And then we want to have each 
uh, result like we have we had like from Kobo, we want to have written that out into a separate sheet in this book. So this one will combine some of our previously learned techniques and this is a very good case. So make sure you do this with me. We will now close this Excel sheet. So what we do is that we start over. So let us delete all this. The first thing that we'll do is to read the Excel sheet. So we got it here called Amazon. What we'll do here is that we now use the Excel application scope. So search for that and drag it in. We'll mark it here, so it become blue, and we will untick the visible. We won't uh, have this uh, operations visible. The workbook path, we'll find it to go by going here, shift right click, copy as path. And now we want to use the best practice and create a variable here. So let's create a variable in the variables manager. We can call this str excel path. And then we'll just paste in the value here in the default. Close down the variables manager, and we can now use the variable up here. So str excel path. That's it. Then we will find a read range still from the excel activities. So drag it in. We'll read sheet one, that's fine. And then in the data table, the output, we'll create a data table where we will store our output. So control K, and we can call this DT, and then we can just say Amazon. Like this. And this one is a data table with the, with the Amazon searches on. So far, so good. Now, what we can do is that we can um, have a open browser and then we can do the operations in there. So close this one down, find an open browser and drag it in. Now we need to ensure two things. First one is that we have the Chrome extension enabled. So go to home, then we go to tools and install the Chrome extension. That's easy. And make sure you restart your browser if you haven't done so. Then in the browser type up here, we will click the Chrome like this. So now we just need to navigate to earn URL and that is just the Amazon. So let's take the front page here. So amazon.com. Copy this and go back to UiPath. Again, we will create a variable because that is best practice. So in the variables, we will create a variable. Let's just call this str URL. Then let's paste it in here. You see that we, when we paste in the path, then it will automatically create the uh, quotation marks. However, here it doesn't, so we need to create them ourselves. So let's just put in quotation marks and put in the Amazon address here. Let's close down the variables manager. And now we can use the newly created variable up here, so control space, and that is the str ul. So now we open up a browser. Then we will do a for each row. So for each of these searches in our Amazon sheet, we will do a search on Amazon. So let's find a for each row here, drag it in. So for each row in our DT Amazon up here, that is the DT Amazon like this, then we want to do something. Let's delete this body because it will get complicated to look at. So what we'll do is that we first we want to navigate to the front page because say that we are in our second row, then we uh, have done a search and we want to make sure that it always looks like this, the front page. So we'll find a navigate to, like here, drag it in. Where do we want to navigate to? That's just the strul, that's the amazon.com. So this one will make sure that our instance will look the same for each of these rows that we want to do operations in. That's always a good practice to make sure that we always come in the same way. Now we want to do a search. So we want to find a type into here and drag it in. Make sure it's still in this for each row. So now we can indicate where we want to type something in. So click indicate. And that is up here in the search field. So this UI element, what do we want to type in? Well, we want to type in whatever in the search column of our Amazon uh, data table here, the sheet here. So what we do here is that we'll say row, that's the current row, because we're in the for each row. Then we want to refer to the column and the column was named search. Uh, we name that in our Excel sheet. So we say item, that's always column, parentheses, quotation marks, 
called search or refer to search. Then go outside the parentheses and say to string because it's an Excel object. Then we want to do the search and we can uh, do that by simply just uh, clicking the plus sign here and click enter. This one will make the search. So now we have done the search and we can say that, uh, for example, we want to say uh, vb.net, that was one of our search strings, and we can see the books here. Now we want to scrape the data here. So we just do exactly like we did before, go back here, then we click the data scraper, we select the elements, so click next, that's the title here, the first title, I'll do this rather quickly, this is the second title. Again, do these operations with me. Those ones are important. So call it title. Then we want to extract the price, the correlated data. Click here. Choose the, sorry, that was, uh, I misclicked, so I only got the sense. And we can just click back. Here, we can click extract correlated data and take the price. Then we take the second element, so click next, and choose the second price. We will call this price, and then we'll click next. Now we can see that we indeed have created the data scraping like we did before. It's exactly the same. We click finish and then we click no again. Like this. Here it will be, it gets a little bit complicated. And because we're already in the browser instance, we can simply just take this extract structure data. You can see here the data table variable is up here. Then we can click control X for cut. And then we can delete this whole sequence. And the smart thing is that we just go down below here to type into and paste it in again. Now we will get an error because this variable doesn't exist, so let's create it. I will control A, delete this, and let's press control K to create a new data table variable. We will just call it DT extract. You can call this whatever you want. I just like this notation. And that is something that is best practice too. So now we have scraped the data for each of the rows, then we want to write it back to a separate Excel sheet. So let's find a right range here. And we choose the one in the Excel. So drag it in here, still in this for each row. So what we want to do is that we want to add headers for a start. Then we want to name the sheet. It is not supposed to be named sheet one, but we need to have it named the current search term. And the current search term is just to be found up here. That's the row item search to string. So what we can do is that we can simply just copy this one. And then we'll paste it down below here. So this one will name our sheet from the current search. We can delete this range as we always do. And what do we want to write out? We want to write out the extracted data table from up here. That was the DT extract, like this. Now we can close our browser. And we can make sure that our workflow will work. UiPath will start in a few seconds. Then it will open up Amazon and we will perform our searches. I'll just fast forward over this as this is not really that interesting. That's it. That was our final search. We can go to our Excel sheet, this is the Amazon, and we can verify that we indeed have scraped all the data. So here we have the COBOL, we have the title price, we have the VB.net, we have the C Sharp, AutoHotKey, and Python. That's it. That's how you data scrape in UiPath.